Hi, and welcome to In The Front Row, all things news, reviews, and interviews. My name is Jamie Lee, and today I'll be doing a review of episode seven of The Boys. But before I jump into my review, I just wanna start by saying that I am not a complete weirdo. I am in fact a bloody genius, because last week I predicted, or not really predicted, it was more like theorized, I guess, that Soldier Boy would be Homelander's dad, just by like him talking about wanting to have kids with Crimson and boys specifically. And like Soldier Boy has really bad daddy issues. And I just thought, hmm, I wonder if, you know, there's something there. But obviously I thought like the age difference is a big thing. I know that Soldier Boy has longevity, but I don't know, just nothing else really like linked up. So I just thought mm, it's all in my head. But this week comes along and bam, in the words of Butcher, daddy's home. Literally, Soldier Boy is Homelander's daddy. Like, that is amazing. So I'm so excited for that. And I really want to see where the story is going to go now. Like, will Homelander still want to kill uh, Soldier Boy? Will Soldier Boy still want to fight with Butcher? what's going to happen. I'm so excited for that. So we start with Huey talking to the legend about how Soldier Boy is basically a fraud. He doesn't get involved in any action and is just used or was just used as a marketing tool by Vought. You know, he's used as the image uh, to bring in popularity, uh, things like that. Meanwhile, they can do their thing in the background, which we know is very similar to what's going on today, where, you know, it's all about the image. It's all about uh, the public and how much money they can bring in. Meanwhile, they're like a pharmaceutical company in the background. Anyway, so Huey, Butcher, and Soldier Boy head off to complete their mission to find Mindstorm. But Mindstorm gets to Butcher first and traps him in this endless nightmare of his memories or his past. And that is where things get really upsetting. We already knew from the past episodes that Lenny, Butcher's brother, had killed himself. And in season two, we met the father. So we knew a little bit about his family or their background. But to see it actually all unfold, what he went through and what his brother went through in the past, that was really, really sad. His dad was emotionally nasty and abusive and then when they showed the physical abuse i had to look away oh jesus please please fuck no because that child abuse is just sad and i don't want to watch stuff like that but all of that stuff was sad and then to think that butcher is becoming him or following in his footsteps doing what his father basically did that was the really sad part and it was really devastating to hear past lenny or memory lenny speak about how Butcher's to blame for everybody that he loves in his life dying. For example, Lenny died, Becca died, and soon Huey's gonna die, basically. So that was also a really sad scene as well. In saying that, the way that these scenes were shot were absolutely beautiful. I really liked the transition between uh, Billy and his dad, showing the comparisons of how they do the exact same things, and then the transition between Butcher hitting Lenny and Butcher hitting Huey. So same thing, it's showing like he's doing the exact same thing that his father did. And then I also really liked the transition between the memories. So he was remembering his dad in the earlier years, and his dad was saying the same thing in like from season two, so from a current memory you either sink or you swim he was saying the exact same line so i thought the way that all that came together was done really really well and it was absolutely heartbreaking when huey was saying to mindstorm to wake butcher up from this nightmare because his family that was very very sweet but i gotta say either the legend was full of crap or Soldier Boy's just completely changed as to how he remembered him because he was definitely involved in the action and yeah, he did not stop with his actions. And I've got to say, I really loved seeing Soldier Boy's skills a little bit more in this. Like his skills is uh, knife precision, knife accuracy, and he was definitely accurate with his throwing knife kill. Well, not kill, but like his throwing knife shot was exactly where it was supposed to go in his eyes, which is what he uses as his powers. So that was really nice to see. And also, you know, seeing him use his shield, that was very brutal. But yeah, it definitely showed Huey that uh, he is capable of more than what the legend was saying. The other really upsetting thing to me is the Kamiko storyline. It is so confusing to me and I don't understand. Like this whole time I was shipping for her and Frenchie. They are in love. They are endgame. They are what I wanted. And I just don't understand why now they're taking this like we're family path. We love each other as family. No, you don't. 
No, you don't. And I don't like where they're going with that. I really wanted them to be in a relationship like romantically. And I don't know, I just feel like is she protecting or trying to protect herself because she thinks that, you know, when she kissed him that he didn't want that and he fled and like, why is he running maybe? I don't know, but I don't like where they're going with that or her in general, like she really wanted to be free from her powers. She's finally free from being a soup. She wanted to feel normal. She wanted to feel, I guess, without her powers. And she's got all that now, and now she wants it back. I understand that she wants to get it back so that she can use her powers for good. And I do honestly think that somewhere along the line, it's gonna be to try and save Frenchie, because I do think Frenchie's gonna die. But I just don't understand what the whole point of all those other scenes are where she was, you know, at the theme park and she saw the kids. And then when she was, you know, in the dildo scene, you know, and all those girls were afraid of her, she didn't want any of that. And now she does. I just don't understand that. It feels really cheap to me and like a cop out, but I guess I'm just a little bit like hurt because I wanted her to get with Frenchie. So I don't know, maybe I'm just a little bit bitter about that. But yeah, I don't like where that's going. Another part that I found really, really sad and I feel like a broken record because I just keep saying, this is sad, this is sad, but was the Black New War stuff. I really like that we finally got some story to do with him because I've been really interested in what his background was, what's happening with him, why is he so loyal to Vought or Homelander, what is going on? And I'm so glad that in this episode we finally got it. I really liked how they showed that he wanted to be a movie star, but obviously all the spotlight was on Soldier Boy and he was the star of the show, but they showed it through, or they showed his memories through a cartoon animation and it was sort of in the form of a movie format. So I really liked that he was like playing a movie in his head uh, and that was his memories or his feelings, I guess. And I thought that was really, really cool and really creative how they shot that. And it was really sad that the characters from this cartoon in his head, they were all comforting him and supporting him. And I thought that was very sad because when you think about it, the team from Payback obviously helped him with his abuse from Soldier Boy. But now, well, but before this, they had to separate, obviously, probably because of Vought's orders. And now they're all dying off. You know, Soldier Boy's coming back and killing them off. So it must have been very, very lonely for Black Noir at Vought. Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why he was so loyal or so clingy to them or even so clingy to Homelander, probably because he felt guilty that he took his dad away. But I feel like these scenes summed up what Grace was telling us through that flashback, what really happened, you know, in the past and what really happened when they captured Soldier Boy. Even though I keep talking about sad things in this episode, there were some really good moments in this episode as well. Not that the sad ones weren't good, but you know what I mean? There was some really funny episodes in this episode as well. I really liked when the girls were standing up to Homelander, when Maeve was like calling him out on being scared for once in his life. That was really funny when she said, I'll fucking shatter whatever you try to stick up there. And when Annie stood up to him as well, when he was threatening to hurt Huey or whatever, and she put it on her live stream so that all her followers could see that that was really good to see that Homelander was like afraid that his image was going to get shattered. So that was really nice that, you know, the girls were fighting back a little bit there. And I'm not going to lie, I really enjoyed the milk scene in this. If you've watched my other videos, you would know that I really find the milk obsession very funny. I don't know why, maybe I'm just a weirdo. But yeah, I always laugh at those scenes. This one didn't disappoint me either. It was very funny, his facial expressions. And yeah, when he was just drinking <laughs> straight from the bucket, it was so good. And then obviously Victoria caught him. He showed his power with her and she's definitely up to something weird. I really want to know what she's hiding or what she's doing. She's definitely up to something sus. And yeah, I can't wait to see what that is. I also can't wait to see what happens with Cassandra, the Deep's girlfriend. Something's definitely sus or going on there. She's like always puppeteering him or like plotting something. I'm not really quite sure, but she definitely has something up her sleeve because she's always wanting the Deep to be uh, in Vought or like sucking up to Homelander. And there's definitely a reason for that. So I can't wait to see what that reason actually is. But I feel very, very sorry for her because she has to compete with a fucking fish. Honestly, it is so disturbing. I actually went back to rewatch that scene purely for research purposes, not for any other reason. I think I needed to like cut a clip out or something like that. But anyway, I went back and you can <coughs> actually hear the sounds from the animal. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this show is just disgusting. It's dead set, not for everyone, hey. But it is for me. 
And also, the E-Train's back, baby! If I'm being honest, I thought he was dead. I really thought when he was lying on the road, you know, he had all them heart problems before and they basically said if you run, you know, your heart will collapse and things like that. So um, after that last episode, I really thought, okay, they don't really have anywhere else for his storyline to go, but it turns out they do because they've replaced Blue Hawk's heart and put it in his. And it's very typical of Vought or Ashley even to have everything all planned out. You know, they've got like a story coming out for him. They've probably got like some commercial coming out, things like this. And it's very what they want the public to see. And you can see that just from the way that Ashley was literally fabricating the whole story about what really happened and how A-Train was sort of just going, yeah. So I'm very curious to see what happens with his storyline and where they take him. And then we learn that Temp V is dangerous. I mean, duh, of course we knew that. But we learn that I think Huey might have two more doses left and maybe Butcher has one. I can't really remember how many times they actually jabbed themselves, but they definitely have a few more doses left and then they're going to die, basically. So it's very, very important that Huey knows that. And then Butcher didn't tell him, like, what is going on? I just don't understand because like we just went through that whole episode of him feeling like guilty or him feeling love towards Huey and really wanting to treat him like his younger brother and like family. And then he's just gonna like basically let him die also he can kill Homelander. I don't really get it and I'm not sure where that storyline is heading. Either way, I can't wait to see what happens in the next episode. The next episode's the finale, so I'm really not looking forward to the fact that it's gonna end, but I am looking forward to seeing what's gonna happen with everybody that I've already just mentioned. I did really like this episode, but as I said, it was very heartbreaking to me. To be fair, I did just watch Stranger Things before it, which was like, so yeah, I don't know, waterworks were going and maybe I was just overly emotional from that and taking it out on this show. But I did find this show very sad, even though I really liked the story. I thought that was very fulfilling, but yeah, very, very sad. So hopefully next week's a big one and it's very different to this week. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Did you like this episode? If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you're not already, please subscribe to my channel and then head on over to my Instagram and give me a follow over there as well, please. Okay, sweet as, have a good day. Bye.